this conference very happy will now be recorded. environment day to all okay and uh, welcome to green works trust uh, online sessions today is world environment day so we have planned for three uh, sessions in a day uh, first one was in the morning at 10 o'clock about awesome facts about birds now at one o'clock we are and then we uh, we have another session at uh, uh, in the evening at six o'clock about awesome uh, about biodiversity and us so please stay tuned and looking forward for more uh, of your participation in next session too uh, this is our 49th topic since the lockdown uh, 49th session we are doing free online for people uh, we believe greenworks trust uh, believes in uh, conservation and for conservation basics is awareness and education so we keep on doing uh, environmental awareness and aware uh, education activities continuously there will be a course we are planning a course on basics of conservation which is a free online course on weekday weekend only you can join for that uh, there will be a the mobile number which will be shared uh, here in the chat box soon uh, on which you can contact i request sarvesh to post once the number here right now so everyone will understand which number they have to reach out or else you can if you are not interested in course you can also contact us for further sessions because we wish to continue these sessions in future if you want updates from us what kind of sessions we are coming up we can add you to broadcasting list please contact on the same given number sarvesh please post your number on in the chat thank you sarvesh uh, sarvesh has posted his number if you wish to write it down i'll i'll say it for you 9769458564 i repeat 9769458564 I am Nikhil Bhopre, Managing Trustee and Founder of Greenworks Trust. I welcome you all again on this lovely World Environment Day session in awesome facts about insects. You can ask me questions anytime during the sessions. Feel free. You can just unmute or you can post in chat. But while taking the session, it, is, it will be difficult for me to go through the chat so it is better you can just unmute it and ask your questions or you can keep it uh, in the chat which we will take after the session is complete okay uh, so here we start awesome facts about insects so what are insects exactly other than spelling what do we know about them they are creepy they are crawlies we we are more many people are frightened like just looking at them what else so insects are one of the most diverse groups we have on the planet and in the insect the animal which we call insect uh, hope i am audible i suggest everyone to keep your video and mic off that will help a lot that will save the uh, that will save your bandwidth also okay and you can hear me clearly since there was a cyclone there was a, a little difficulty in internet in our region uh, i stay in navi mumbai so you know please uh, keep your mics and video off and uh, you are most welcome to ask questions anytime so insects are animals who has three pair of legs you can take any of these by the way these are not anti these are antennas not legs these are the legs okay so they have three pair of legs and uh, they may or may not have wings and they have mouth parts outside of the body and not inside okay these are called as insects this is the basic definition uh, what all insects have uh, and they are very diverse okay how diverse let's see there are 1.5 million species known to science 
that means known to humans there are 1.5 million species of insects identified till now and there are expected to be 9 million species of insects on the planet it is expected this is just a guess by the scientist that there can be 9 million species that is 90 lakhs species right now we know only 15 lakh species which are identified okay now so many so many so many species but there are diverse groups also it is not that there are only in good numbers but let's see the let's hear out just main groups of insects what kind of main groups we have the cockroach is an insect beetles as you know earwigs earwig is not here earwig this is earwig this is earwig then true flies may flies true bugs ants bees wasps termites ants and termites are different by the way they are not in one group butterflies moths praying mantis dragon flies damsel flies grasshoppers crickets not the game crickets those who chirp those who call in during the nights then katy dids stick insects stick insect we saw this is the stick insect okay then stone flies book lies then fleas thrips dobson flies and so on there are lot of lot of groups and then there are subgroups too lots of subgroups so there are at least 24 25 names i just took uh, we don't have to go all uh, about that we'll just see what specialties what awesome facts they have uh, uh, to show us okay out of these 1.5 million species there are 3 lakh 80000 species described of beetles only so that covers about 40 approximately 40% of known insects in the world beetles itself is so diverse imagine and there are different groups there is a blister beetle there is a dung beetle there is a long horn beetle there is a weevil beetle there is uh scarab beetles there are too many types of these okay there's row beetles and jewel beetles and what not so many names into it okay we don't have to go all by that but just to understand almost 40% of the diversity of insects is beetles okay now how many in numbers are there so if taking in account that world's world human population is 730 billion people okay so there are about 1.4 billion insects per human 1.4 billion insects per human i am saying that means 1 lakh 1 1 140 crore insects per human that is the amount of insects is there uh, in uh, in the individuals are there in on the earth okay then we are just worrying about this let's talk about ants so many types of ants there and it is expected to be 10 quadrillion 10 quadrillion ants on any given time in on planet what is quadrillion it is 15 zeros 15 zeros on one okay that is quadrillion that means there are about 1.4 million ants per human in on the planet this is based on the data that there are about 7.3 billion people on the planet okay so there are 1.4 billion insects and out of which 1.4 million ants per human as of now okay now what is this anyone this is a spider spider is it insect correct spider arachnid. so is it a insect arachnid. Arachnid. no yes. arachnid arachnid, arachnid. 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 So, correct is it a so it is a giant wood spider yes no it is giant wood spider and okay. uh, so it's a spider as you all saying and it is from arachnid group why it is not an insect it has eight legs it has uh, eight eight legs, legs correct and uh, it's black correct, uh, correct. eight legs yeah. because insects have six legs correct insects have six legs and by the way all the 
arthropods or insects we are saying for us as of now we are talking about insects insects have three major body parts one is head other is thorax abdomen. and third is abdomen abdomen okay so this is an arachnid and not an insect let's see their insects abilities what kind of abilities do they have so this is a termite queen uh, certain species of termite queens can produce up to 40000 eggs in a single day 40000 eggs in a single day that is about 165 million eggs in a lifespan of 15 years average lifespan so 40000 eggs in a single day which is counts for 165 million eggs in a lifespan of 15 years okay that is too huge why just just you might be wondering why so much of individuals why so much of population of insects can anyone guess what is the reason why there are so many insects because they are the base of the food chain because the whole diversity is dependent on them lots of lots of predators will depend on these okay you will get to know lot about uh, their benefits in the last session so stay tuned please join it at 6 o'clock on the biodiversity uh, uh, biodiversity and us session at 6 o'clock okay then this is cicada what is a cicada cicada looks like actually a fly uh, with a very long wings but they are very hard they are they are different than flies they are more of bugs okay and cicadas are called as luckiest and loudest insects in the world now you must be wondering why luckiest luckiest this is not my saying there is a author which has said this cicadas are luckiest and loudest insects in the world why luckiest is because their wives are mute okay so it is only males which call which make noise okay so, so jokes apart they are loudest on earth loudest insects at what decibels they can say it is at 120 decibels they can make noise okay 120 decibels that is the siren of an ambulance imagine that loud they can do the call okay and the males are generally calling during the mating season only it is not that throughout the life they will be calling because more than 90% of their life is underground okay underground as in what happens is that after mating female uh, cuts open the uh, or slits open the uh, small twigs or the barks they she lay eggs from the ovipositor and uh, as soon as the eggs are hatched the nymphs or the babies uh, of the cicadas they dig down dig the ground and the soil they go to the fresh roots and they keep feeding on the fresh roots of the tree as soon as they become adult they climb on to the they come out from the soil they molt and convert into the individual which we are seeing here like this okay so there are many species of cicadas there are some species in new world in america which can stay which uh, can survive till 17 years but majorly in oriental region there are cicadas which can live up to 2 to 5 years so imagine 90% of their life is underground okay and cicada is our cicada some people call so uh, cicada actually literally means a tree cricket so they are not related to cricket but they make sound and tree cricket is the uh, meaning of the word cicada from the greek greek word it has come okay and they are diurnal they are not nocturnal like crickets so crickets call in the night okay and the uh, crickets are on the ground whereas cicadas are on the trees hence the name tree cricket okay now we just heard about uh, cicadas and the relation between cricket so here is the example of cricket uh, in cricket also it is only the males which call the females don't produce call okay they don't make any kind of noise they talking about male and female who do you think the 
uh, in the mosquito who do you think drinks the blood is it a male or a female female female, female. female right. it is only the female uh, of mosquitoes which drink blood in order to obtain nutrients needed to produce eggs okay let's go ahead more about that to have a fit generation fit male have ability to keep female to himself okay so has to reduce the competition and uh, so as to prevent competitors from inseminating females mate, mates some males in six stay latched to the female for days on end okay here you can see the male will stay this is a male and the longer one is the female uh, the male's indian stick insect the male indian stick insect trachithorax paraxis has a record of staying latched with female for 79 days imagine 79 days the male stayed with the female itself latched on that is the world record i guess i haven't heard it anything uh, we have seen in snakes that 24 hours snakes we saw it latched on but 79 days <laughs> never heard of right i'm sure you must be um, uh, uh, wondering with the facts we are saying but that these are true very much true now let's see the eating abilities uh, so this is a lady ladybird beetle and they can eat up to 5000 insects in a lifetime 5000 insects so ladybirds are ladybird beetles are very helpful to us very helpful to economy because they feed on aphids and scaly insects and which are uh, which are which acts as a pest to the crops so they are very helpful ladybird beetles are very helpful so if the if you find some uh, ladybird beetle in your house don't kill it just release it outside okay and if the 5000 insects are too much for you just wait for this what can you see a uh, ant group of ants feeding on a scorpion right now if we uh, we just saw what kind of what is the amount of population of ants are there that is 10 quadrillion in give, in any given time which is 1.4 million ants per human in the world okay per human so what imagine what kind what amount of food they might be eating imagine the total number of ants in the world the food they eat or they prey on in a, a year equals to 300 times hello can you hear me Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. I, I saw someone is writing. I hope you are. I'm audible now. Okay. So, uh, so I'll repeat again. There are the total population of ants in the world. What they feed in a year, one single year, equals to three hundred times of the. total population of humans alive on the earth got my point total number of ants in the world what they feed in a single year equals to 300 times 300 times of the weight of the human being live human being on earth that is 7.3 billion people we are talking okay 300 times that is the scale something right now after these their weighing capacity what what is the weight lifting ability of the ants so some ants can lift or carry more than 50 times of their own weight 50 times of their own weight and there is one more beetle called rhinoceros beetle which has uh, lifted about 851 times of its body weight that is like one human lifting 10 male elephants at a time imagine 10 male elephants lifting at a time isn't it awesome yeah. make some noise yes yeah, yes very nice yes great okay 
let's go ahead now we just uh, heard about weighing uh, weight lifting capacity let's hear about uh, weight pulling ability one dung beetle can drag 1141 times of its weight 1141 times of its weight that's like a human pulling six double decker buses okay six double decker buses now jumping ability a species of spittle bug is known to jump 100 times its height 100 times its height up to 28 inches that is an insect world record okay here you can see the comparison common flea can jump this much but a frog hopper which is actually a spittle bug which can jump 100 times of its own height okay now from jumping there are many species which jump so what do they have so grasshoppers they have a special organ in their hind legs they store energy for jumping so this is a normal position this is they are storing the uh, they are storing the energy and then that is released from here see this this is enlarged so that is released that's how they jump so all the so all the insects basically uh, they have legs and wings attached to their thorax okay not to abdomen so uh, whether it is wings or whether it is legs they all come out from their thorax okay that's how they jump now from jumping record let's see what is the flying record or the fastest insects okay uh, cheetah as we all know cheetah runs at 74 miles per hour or roughly 120 km per hour what does an horse fly do horse fly can fly at 90 miles per hour that is 145 km per hour is the flight record okay and other than this there is a species called there is a group of beetles called tiger beetle which is uh, known to be a fastest running beetle which runs at 9 to 12 km per hour okay a beetle running at 9 to 12 km that is double than the walking speed of human being imagine a beetle that tiny so in comparison that is way too high now let's go to the flying as in flapping speed what is the record so not record record but you know what speed they can flap a bee wings beat at 190 times a second 190 times a second that's about 11400 times a minute isn't that awesome yes say it say it awesome 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 yeah let's go to anatomy now uh, we all know what is the size of our heart right it is when you fold your uh, fold your fingers and form a fist okay that is the size of your heart fist size correct that is the heart of your heart and shape of your uh, that is the size and shape of your heart okay can you mute it again yeah thanks so what is the shape of insects okay this is their heart the insects all the insect heart is a segmented and chambered vessel running on a, along their back see this this is their heart it is a segmented and chambered vessel okay their blood is called as hemolymph and hemolymph is typically clear but uh, sometimes can be greenish or yellowish in color okay whereas our blood what we call blood is red in color right or is it blue i'm sure everyone has blur red, red right in color yeah, and yeah correct okay correct correct so uh, so insects have insects do not have blood that blood what we call in our there it is called as hemolymph and hemolymph is generally greenish or yellowish now this is about heart now what is about breathing we breathe most of the people breathe from nose i hope everyone breathes from the nose right so but in insects it is different 
in insects they don't have nose they don't have they don't breathe from their mouth they breathe through a uh, tiny holes called spiracles which are located at the on their abdomen or in the thorax region there are tiny holes which are called as spiracles so in butterflies for example there can be specific holes to breathe in and specific holes to breathe out okay now let's have an example of some other example in breathing itself can, what can you see here what does this animal look like a scorpion right okay so uh, this is called as water scorpion the uh, to breathe underwater they use snorkel like tube on its abdomen see here this is a snorkel like tube they have on their abdomen so they breathe from their abdomen <laughs> but abdomen is like they don't have spiracles here they don't have holes here instead they have a snorkel like uh, thing attached to their abdomen which is pointed out of the water here you can see the reflection right reflection of the of this uh, snorkel like projection so here it is coming out of the water and it is breathing from that okay so this is called as water scorpion now what is the hearing capacity let's try that insects can have ears all over the place okay they don't have ears like us yet rarely on their actual heads someone's mic is on please mute it do you have question you can ask please no problem okay thanks thanks for muting it so lace wings have uh, lace wings are group of insects they have ears at the base of their wings whereas crickets including katydids have thin sound sensitive membranes on their fore legs okay grasshoppers ears appear on their abdomens the ears of tachinids a parasitic type of fly peek out from their necks some hawk moth so there is a good story of uh, moths uh, there are some you as you know there are bats which do echolocation or ultrasonic sound waves which they release to find the way into the dark and to find some species they find their food from that same sound they make which is not uh, which we cannot hear okay ultrasonic sound so uh, what happens is that uh during the night as you know that moths are uh, moths are active in the night right so during the night uh, once the bat uh, sends this ultrasonic sound the there are some species of hawk moths some species of moths which have the capacity to hear those sounds okay and to so what happens is that uh, if the uh, uh, if the moth is sitting near the light as you know moths are attracted to the light if the moth is sitting on a wall the bat is trying to come and chase it the moths will uh, moths are able to hear that sound they will drop down from the uh, where they are sitting as soon as the bats come to catch them okay because they can hear some some species of moths they can create their own ultrasonic burst okay to drive away bats okay so in hawk moths they rub their genitals together to create that ultrasonic sound isn't it awesome so for that a butterfly can hear up from 20 to 20000 hertz and they can hear it all over from all over their body okay not specific to four legs or below the wings or stuff like that okay now it is about vision what kind of vision do they have a prominent feature of insect is compound eye not all they can have two types of eyes one is compound eye and one is single eye like us okay uh, ocelli but compound eyes consisting of many individual uh, visual units called omatidia omatidia okay a popular misconception which is that each unit acts as its own eye no okay so it is not that they see uh, see a complete picture from one omatidia 
for a safer and better pronunciation we'll say it as lens someone's mic is on again thank you so let let's call it as lenses small small lenses instead of calling it omatidia so these lenses are tiny uh, lenses so uh, these are more like pixels okay they built a more like a mosaic of uh, mosaic imagery okay the dragonfly is widely considered to have the most impressive omatidia or the lenses studied compound eyes with about 30 thousand units per half spheroid eye that is 60000 units in two eyes okay 60000 units you can imagine and generally in butterflies also there are many many uh, many lenses uh, it is said that butterflies uh, males will have more lenses than the females okay this was about their eyesight now let's see about their tasting butterflies test with their feet where do we test it from from the tongue from our taste buds right whereas a house fly can test a sugar with their feet which are 10 million times more sensitive than Many human more. tongue hello any question or uh, don't they have the proboscis which is like tubular yes but proboscis is to feed that is a mouth part they don't test from it they test through their legs their drinking capacity is from proboscis they can okay okay uh, drink something or absorb something but they don't taste it from that first they taste it from their legs okay and these legs are tests uh, uh, or these test birds what they have on their legs they are so sensitive with in comparison to humans it is 10 million times more sensitive okay now uh, how insects grow so there are two types of uh, metamorphosis metamorphosis is basically a stages in life whereas in humans it is just a uh, born a child what what we called uh, an infant then a kid then a teen age and then the adult right but all of us they from or any stage we look same okay whereas in uh, insects it is different there are two stages one is three stage one is four stage three stage metamorphosis called as incomplete metamorphosis so in that there is a eye okay uh, not eye there is a egg so egg which out of uh, the nymph comes out of the egg which is actually a juvenile or the smaller size of the adult itself and then there is an adult so nymph may not have wings at the start they will develop and then they will grow and then they will completely grow to become an adult that is the stage which is called as three stage metamorphosis or incomplete metamorphosis now what is there in complete metamorphosis the, it is called as four stages as every stage is different there is egg there is larva there is pupa and then an adult okay so in these uh, in this four stages larva and adult which can feed whereas eggs and pupa they cannot feed they are dormant more of dormant they don't feed same in this but only egg which they don't feed as soon as uh, the nymph comes out from the egg they start feeding till the adulthood okay that is the major difference so what is the example this is the example of incomplete metamorphosis this is a grasshopper and this is the example of a, a, a complete metamorphosis which is a butterfly or a moth so four stages from the butterfly there is only any any question anyone yes sir actually i wanted to ask that does uh, silkworm also have complete metamorphosis yes silkworm is actually a moth silkworm are moths they are worms they are caterpillars okay so it shows complete yeah. metamorphosis yes it okay. does but we take so, it we take the silk before they hatch correct so one more question 
cocoon yeah yeah please uh, what is the difference between larva and caterpillar so larva nymph and the caterpillars are different names uh so for example caterpillar is the name of the uh, juvenile stage or a nymph stage uh, so juvenile is in mammals or birds or stuff like that uh, it is a specific name for that stage whereas nymph or a larva or a caterpillar are specific names to a smaller individuals or the earlier stages of the uh, insect so caterpillar is specific name given to a, a butterfly or a moth okay okay yeah okay so in that uh, we we can use only the word caterpillar not the larva larva is not wrong but it is better okay. to use okay. caterpillar okay. okay because that is thank more you, apt yeah okay okay thank you sorry yeah so about butterflies so in there is only one record there is only known butterfly one known butterfly which is poisonous and which can cause a death for a human this is known record which i am talking okay there was there is a story of a boy who was found dead okay from the autopsy it uh, they came to know that there was a butterfly parts found in its stomach so to just to see this just to confirm this there's a, a scientist called Larsen Torben Larsen Torben actually ate this plain tiger butterfly this species is known as plain tiger he actually ate it and he was hospitalized for 15 days he survived he is still alive but but he was admitted to the hospital so uh, only butterfly known to known uh, to be a death of a human being is a plain tiger there are many species of this which are called as milkweed butterflies because milkweed caterpillars feed on uh, poisonous plants milk milkweed plants actually so they can cause a death but it is not that if you if it bites you because butterfly butterflies cannot bite you they have very soft uh, straw like proboscis right which they uh, try to feed on the nectar or some other liquid right but uh, if you eat it only if you consume it then it is, can be a fatal thing right so don't worry about butterflies there is no poison there is no venomous butterfly i mean there is no butterfly which can sting you or even if sits on you no problem not at all a problem but if you eat it then only it is a problem okay let's go ahead then what are the smallest insects fairy flies these are the fairy flies these they look like this they are one of the smallest insects in the world which range from 0.13 0.13 5.4 mm millimeter i am talking so 0.13 millimeter i am talking okay that small and what was the largest ever known the dragonfly dragonfly with at the size the so older records of course uh, from the jurassic era the largest dragonfly ever known had a wingspan of 80 cm and used to feed on other insects and amphibians like creatures that time which is not there now but the largest known uh, insect in the world right now is a stick insect is a size of uh, adult adult ha a human hand one hand so about 60 65 cm is the longest known or largest known uh, insect okay which is now but before it was 80 cm wingspan dragonfly okay let's see about lifespan these are may flies and may flies are known to have the shortest lifespan approx 24 hours only and these emerge uh, very well in summers uh, late summers and uh, in monsoon and the lifespan is basically of adult of an adult may fly huh? okay 24 hours only now longest living insect the termite queen and wood borers 
termite queen and the wood borers are known to live for 50 years 50 years imagine i hope i am audible yes yes sir. yes, yes very, very much yes okay cool very very clear okay thanks and some researchers believe that these can survive up to 100 years but there is not recorded yet okay there was one story of a wood borer and a beetle which uh, you know someone uh, the, so there was a logging and uh, uh, after that it, they made a furniture from that log and after some time they got to know that after 50 years of that uh, furniture the wood borer came out of that the furniture <laughs> okay so that how that's uh, the story of the wood borer how we know that they survive for 50 years let's see some skills what kind of skills they have uh, can we walk on the water can we walk on the water maybe if no. we have uh, no. so as per the speed what we have no but if we run at a speed certain speed we may be able to but that is impossible humanly impossible okay with machines yes possibly but this insect water strider proves that water has surface tension so what it does actually you can see this is a bug actually by the way this is a bug so you can see here these four legs and then the two legs here okay so six legs are there don't worry so these two these are four legs are the longest so what they do is they create a cavity here they hold the air in the cavity and they can float on that okay so this is called as water strider then like geckos this is a stick insect like geckos some species of stick insects are known to self ampute their legs so if someone tries to feed on them if it is uh, caught by its leg they can self ampute too now the silkworms silkworms are used as the primary producer of the silk as we all know and silkworms are actually moths so it is the cocoons from which we produce the silk this is the cocoon okay so there is a story of ah ahimsa silk too so what happens is most of the silk which is uh, there available uh, so what happens is that the uh, caterpillar goes into a pupa stage and they form a cocoon that cocoon is actually a, a source of the silk what we get uh, people try to get the silk before the caterpillar tries to come out so there is ahimsa silk which is very costly uh, why it is ahimsa because they let the uh, pupa or the moth come out of the cocoon okay and then those cocoons are used to create the silk okay then the next story is of a potter wasp so potter wasp here you can see a pot so they make nest um, kind of nest uh, but they don't stay in that so i'll tell you the story they make these kind of pots okay what they do they go fetch uh, they catch some caterpillar or stuff like that they will paralyze this caterpillar enough that it won't make a move they will get that caterpillar or a prey they'll put it inside this they'll lay the egg inside they'll close this opening and why do they do this is because the caterpillar will be paralyzed huh? it won't be dead because dead ones the the uh, the eggs if the eggs hatch out it is the dead animal which they will be eating which can cause a problem so they just paralyze it so they don't move at all they just lie down there the eggs hatch out from the uh, so the nymph hatch out from the eggs and they feed on the fresh caterpillars or the fresh food they get to eat okay don't you think that there are there are insects which are very clever and we say that human is the cle uh, most clever animal on the planet imagine so many things that insects can do isn't it nikhil diksha here yeah diksha 
potter wasps are same as mud wasps so there are different different types of wasps uh, wasp uh, so as per my knowledge there are at least 1 lakh 20000 species discovered till now about wasps so there are so so potter wasp is a uh, just a group name mud wasp can be a vague name okay potter wasp is oh. the wasp which makes a pot like structure whereas there are other mud wasp which they can have a shape different shape basically and not potter okay thank you yeah sir honey bees yeah. are also clever no honey bees are they clever yeah, yeah, very much kind of very much every animal What is we clever call it to gandhi. survive themselves gandhil mash is also clever na what we call in marathi yes yes very much everything is clever other than human actually because we are the ones who are destroying everything not them so who's clever uh, gandhil mash is kind assets. of uh, gandhil mash means kind of honey bee na well gandhil mash is the wasp honey bee is madhmashi acha okay yes yeah ah uh, hello okay. yeah yeah ah shwetyo i wanted to ask regarding uh, caterpillar caterpillar uh-huh. or butterfly uh, so Uh, if they feed, uh, uh, if the plain tiger caterpillar feed on uh, milkweed yeah do they don't they get affected by the milkweed not uh, at all poison? not at all not at all that is their life cycle Why do? that is they are immune to okay okay last uh, couple of slides are there i'll just finish and then we can take questions it's only three uh, slides now okay we'll go ahead then the praying mantis uh, praying mantises are known to feed on snakes lizards birds fish whatever you can you imagine there was a video also shared uh, the praying mantis feeding on a lizard but that was a stage video but this happens in nature okay they feed on snakes they feed on insects they can feed on geckos or even birds here you can see it's it has caught a bird okay such a tiny creature but they can feed on anything because they have kind of raptorial legs they are spikes on their legs right so from that they can catch hold of almost anything okay next ants leave the trail and uh, communicate with each other using pheromones as chemical signals okay then Sir, this is a Yes. Sorry, interrupt you. So you mentioned about the praying mantis catching the bird and the uh, yeah, this like gecko. So what is the size of the praying mantis? Here you can see the size. This is a sun. Okay. The... Okay. And see the size of the praying mantis. So uh, largest praying mantises I have seen is about six to eight inches. Oh, okay. Inches. Yeah, yeah. so okay, uh, okay. praying mantises are basically ambush predators so they are very well camouflaged they don't move and they attack very fast okay another uh, interesting story about praying mantises is that uh, in mating during the so pre, it is said that uh, uh, praying mantises have two uh, two brains okay uh, which is actually technically saying it is wrong but what happens i'll tell you uh so why uh, in mating few species and few individuals may do this that they uh, uh while mating the female uh, if she is exhausted she will start feeding on the male head itself okay during the mating uh, and even if it is uh, the head of the male is completely eaten the mating still continues okay let's go ahead okay thank you sir yeah now it is uh, about a butterfly uh, a pro- so this is a species called painted lady i hope you have uh, i'm sure you have heard about uh, monarch butterflies which are known to do uh, longest migration butterfly 
from uh, america south america yes. to south i mean middle america to north, north america, america right monarchs but that record yes. is broken yes. by a species called painted lady so monarchs are known to do travel known to travel or migrate about 7000 kilometers so painted lady which is seen in india also painted lady is widely spread from ac- uh, across africa to uh, eurasia to oriental region to everywhere okay uh, except america i guess i am not sure whether they are found in america but uh, old world basically they are spread across and they are very fast butterflies so these have uh, broken the record of monarchs so a species uh, painted lady is known now known to migrate from sub saharan countries to europe and back sub saharan countries to europe and back they do this in 5 to 6 generations in butterflies the migration is generally in successive generations so it is generally the fifth or sixth generation which returns to the same place and it is broken the record longest uh, record is now 12000 kilometers monarchs were 7000 this is now 12000 kilometers imagine okay isn't that awesome yeah awesome cool so the, thank you so cool. much this was the last side you have any questions sir i heard that richard ebright was a scientist who used to tag monarch butterflies and he did a lot of research on monarch butterflies so uh, so yes highest uh, migration data gathered by anyone is uh, uh, anyone done on is monarchs so monarchs are the most studied uh, insect migration yes richard ebright did this na no? like scientist yeah 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 he also did major work yes yes any questions you okay. can ask in the chat or you can post here uh, you can Thank call you. directly unmute it uh, nikhil diksha here once again yes diksha uh, you mentioned how ants and beetles are able to carry say 50x of their uh, total body weight right can you just give us an idea of how it is enable what in their physiology helps them do that physiology oh so uh, uh, frankly speaking i am not aware about that but uh, all these ants ha- all these uh, insects have exoskeleton okay and uh, possibly they have much stronger muscles i guess <laughs> i'm just guessing i'm not sure what happens any question yes sir uh, one uh, question uh, uh, mehul yeah yeah mehul uh another question is like what is the difference between pupa and cocoon so pupa uh, so butterflies do have pupas uh, it is also called as chrysalis okay and uh, cocoon is a protective mechanism so they form another layer or kind of protection on their uh, pupa okay so moths do have cocoons and uh, okay. butterflies have only pupas i mean moths okay. can have cocoons okay okay thank you so much uh, sir, sir i have a question hmm this is tushar uh, i want to ask that uh, i have heard insects are omnipresent so are there insects in polar regions yeah very much there is one only one insect known from the antarctic also oh, one species okay. which is i think a flea or something like that i'm not sure yeah okay thank you sir i would i have a question please how long do the butterflies yeah. live what is the life of a butterfly uh, how how long yeah so talking about butterflies there are roughly 1320 species in india okay and uh, so there are so the smallest is the size of the your smallest finger nail 
okay from yeah. that to much bigger size okay so it depends yeah. on life depends on the species you are looking at so the smallest one can the adult one i mean the butterfly not we are not talking about the earlier stages like egg pupa and caterpillar yeah, yeah so adult butterfly, butterfly yeah. life span can be from 3 days to 8 months 8 months 8 months so there are adult butterflies which have survived for 8 months oh i see acha thanks thanks a lot yeah welcome uh, nikhil when you were How talking do... about yeah span of insects right sorry sorry come again uh, i couldn't hear uh, you were talking about the life span of insects right saying termite queens can survive for around 50 years and all of that correct correct uh, what correct. about cockroaches because i've read cockroaches can survive a nuclear holocaust yeah. also yeah, yeah, any yeah, yeah, yeah. put some yeah, yeah cockroaches actually uh, you know even if you cut their head they can survive for 7 days <laughs> imagine so i am not okay. sure exactly about how long they can survive as an individual but i know this that they can survive without head for 7 days and they can survive under water uh, for 30 minutes okay oh, okay thank you Yeah. Any more questions? Yes. So, sir, the honeybees produce royal jelly, right? So, can we use it for premature births in humans? Premature births? So, yeah, because uh, it helps in the rapid development of individuals, right? Rapid development of individuals. Royal jelly helps. oh it it is better left to scientist i am not from embryology no not sure man yes thank you fireflies are also kind of insects yes fireflies are beetles oh they add up to light i heard like when there is dark they emit their own light no that is uh, signaling uh, for females so they can uh, attract females that is something different is that bioluminescence no they create light bioluminescence are fungus they can control that uh, emitting so every species will uh, cert- emit certain intensity and certain intervals of uh, light uh, uh, which is uh, their breeding signal so the female of uh, uh, firefly uh, which are also called as glow worms they uh, they cannot fly they are they are carnivores so they will in a, emit certain intensity of light to attract males of different species to feed on them okay i guess there are questions are over so thank you so much everyone for joining us on this uh, journey and this was the uh, this was i think 49th or 50th session we are doing free for you guys there will be another session at 6 o'clock on biodiversity and us and this is from green works trust nikhil bopley here again and thank, thank you. you for joining please uh, mention please note down sarvesh's number sarvesh please post it again here can you post it again or yes, i'll repeat posted. for you guys i'll repeat for you guys sarvesh number 9769458564 okay you can ping him for uh, further uh, about our future plans about our future sessions we keep on doing these sessions and we wish to continue these sessions and uh, 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 any help from your side will be great please do keep joining us and looking forward to meet you soon on the courses we are doing or the sessions we are doing in future take care thank you so much goodbye Thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you thank so much thank you guys thank you thank, thank you nikhil thank you
thanks thanks thank you nikki welcome